Hello, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to another video in this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. In this video, I would like to teach you how to take your amazing Grasshopper plugin and package it and push it in a way that is available in the package manager of the Rhino ecosystem. What does that look like? Well, if I go to Rhino and I type underscore package manager, this window pops up where I have access to a lot of plugins and a lot of tools that people have developed. So if I type, for example, parametric camp, we're going to find this plugin that I just packaged and that I just uploaded in this video. And then we could click on install, uninstall, we could manage the version, et cetera, et cetera. And it makes it much easier to distribute, to share, and to have people um, be able to access your contributions, okay? Uh, the alternative is in the previous video on this series, I taught you how to do this with Food for Rhino, but Food for Rhino requires manual installation, etc., etc. It's a bit more cumbersome. So as of February of 2023, I think the package manager is the preferred way to go moving forward. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to take your files, package them in a way that are compliant with the package manager, push them to the server in the package manager and therefore make them available in the UI tool that comes with Rhino. What I'm going to show you works for Grasshopper plugins, but it also works for Rhino plugins as well. Okay, so it's general for everything. So without further ado, let's get packing and let's get pushing. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So what is the package manager, right? The package manager is basically this tool that allows anyone in the Rhino ecosystem to be able to manage the plugins and the tools and the scripts and all those files that you can exchange and to make your Rhino tools and your Grasshopper tools more powerful. So it basically looks two different ways. If you're an user, it looks something like this. I have, as I have shown in my previous videos, you can type underscore and then package manager. And then what you will get is this kind of UI interface where you can type, for example, panel, and then you can look for tools that are called side panels, or you can go into whatever you have installed, right? And you can upgrade your versions, you can uninstall stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So it's an easier UI-based way of managing your plugins and your packages in your system. So that's from the user standpoint. But now from the developer standpoint, which is what we want to do here, it looks a little bit different. So the package manager is basically this ecosystem where you as a developer, you can push your code in pre-formatted or pre-template packages that have to have this particular template so that the server that is managing the packages is able to understand things from your package, such as, for example, the name of the package, the authors, what version it's using, which uh, environments and platforms it's compatible with, etc., etc. So what that boils down to is that um, you have, when you package your files for the package manager, they need to have a specific hierarchy of files, and they need to have this one file that has all the metadata according to the specifications of the package manager, all the metadata for the package manager to know all these things, your name, your plugin name, etc., etc. right? The way the Rhino people have thought about this is that they provide with a tool that is called Yak or Yak, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, it's called Yak, which is basically a command line tool that helps you through this whole process. This tool can be found under your main Rhino file system. So in my computer, that looks like program files, Rhino 7 and system. So I'm going to right click here and open a command prompt. And I'm going to pull that command prompt over here. And I'm going to type jack.x, all right? And you can see that as I do that, I get like, hey, this is how you use it. So I know that I can press I can type yak.help. Can I zoom in here? Yes. And then I get a breakdown of things that I can do. So you can install something, you can build something, etc., etc. And this is the full list of the things that you can do. So 
There is extensive documentation on the Rhino Developer website about how to use this, but I'm going to help you through this video with the basics. So what we're going to do in this, in this video, sorry, <laughs> is we're going to do three things. First of all, is we're going to prepare our file system so that it's compatible with the package manager structure. Then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to build a package according to those specifications. And the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to push that package to the server. So let's start with the first one. If you scroll all the way down in this page, what is the package manager? If you scroll all the way down, you will see, you can read how this works, etc., etc. but you can read that there's a link called the anatomy of a package. The anatomy of the package is the first entry point to formatting our files in a way that are package manager compliant. What this means is that it, what it's telling us here, and you can read through the, comment, the documentation, is that basically you need to have a root folder where you have all your Grasshopper stuff. So that's going to be your DLLs, your plugin, etc., etc. And then you need, may need to have some other folders where you may have the README, license, etc., etc. And on top of that, you need to have this root manifest file that I will explain in a second. All right, so let's start building that. So I'm going to go back to our plugin. Okay, if you remember, we created our distribution file. So I'm actually going to split this in two now. So I'm going to say one is going to be food for Rhino and the other one is going to be for the package manager. So it's going to be two. And then what I had before, I'm going to copy it to food for Rhino. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these files, the samples and the DLLs, et cetera, et cetera, and I'm going to place them here in the package manager. Correct? Beautiful. So I have most of that and you can add a readme, you can add a license, you can do all of that your, yourself, all right? Then the next thing that I, I need to do is I need to create a manifest.yaml.yml file. So there's different ways we can do that. So I'm going to, for example, right click here, new, and I'm going to create a text document. And I'm going to make sure that I change the extension from TXT to YAML. So that's going to be called manifest.yml. And again, make sure that you override the TXT extension, all right? I'm going to change the file extension, et cetera, et cetera, yes. And then I'm going to open a text editor and I'm going to drop that file into my text editor. You're going to see that this file is currently right now empty, correct? So now what do I do with this file? This file is basically the file that's going to contain all the metadata for the package manager to read and to understand where is this plugin coming from, versions, author names, etc., etc. In order to fill this correctly, we need to go to the manifest.yml link here, which is going to give us <laughs> an error. <laughs> All right, so maybe I'm going to go back here and go to the package manifest. So this link here. All right. And then in this link, you can see that basically what we have is a file with this content. This is called YAML, which basically stands for a particular formatting of structured data. What that means is that I can copy and paste all of this. And what I can do is each one of these things is a property and each one of these things is the value for that property. If you read the documentation, it tells you that these first four are the mandatory ones. So for example, this is going to be name parametric camp. All right, that's going to be, the version is going to be 0 0.010. That's going to be the earliest one. Uh, this is going to be Jose Luis, oh, sorry, Jose Luis, up, guys, up, where is, yep, and, and then we're going to do, up, oh, sorry, I'm still in the Spanish keyboard, there you go, V parametric camp community, all right. And the description is going to be whatever I put here. I forget a blah, a test teaching for turning and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to just copy and paste this here. I need to respect the formatting. So it needs to be indented at least a couple 
oc of exactly. It needs to be indented. Now the URL is going to be this one here. It's going to be this GitHub repo. Oh no, it's going to be, I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm going to do text wrapping so that I can see this better. And then this tells me that there's a couple of recommended attributes that are optional. So for example, keyword, I'm going to open and it's going to be keyword is going to be education, learning, and then YouTube, for example. And then the icon, <clears throat> it has to be apparently has to be a 64 by 64 image, either PNG or JPEG. Let me produce that. So I just created the file. It's now called icon.png and is this uh, 64 by 64 uh, PNG, very low res. So here I'm going to say icon.png. All right, I'm going to save this and I think this conforms to the structure of the manifest file, okay? As it is explained in the documentation. Again, you're more than welcome to read through this, but it's basically created this file that has a very particular structure. Once we have this, then we are pretty much ready to go in terms of the file system. We have all the files that we need, okay? And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to build this into a package. Let me show you how to do that. If we look through the documentation in the Rhino developer website, you can see that we need to use this command line tool called YAC, the one that I introduced before. And the main way of building it is using the build option in the YAC uh, command line tool. So first things first. So we looked at YAC before and we knew that it's somewhere inside of program files, Rhino 7 system, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is in order to in order to access that, I'm going to open a command line prompt in the folder where I have all my files ready to be packed. Okay, so I'm going to do that there. I can do this by right clicking and opening it here in your system. It might look different, all right? So I am in my folder, in my package manager folder, all right? So I can type there and I can see all my files right here. So what I want to do is I want to use the command line tool, the, the Jack command line tool. So if I type Jack, you can see that it's not recognized as a command, blah, 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 because it's actually not in this folder. It's in this other folder that is this one here, C, program files, Rhino, and system. What that means is there's two ways then to call this file that is living on a different folder. One of them is to either, let me clear this, to either use its full qualified route. So C dot program files, Rhino 7, system, etc., etc., and then backslash yak dot x, x, all right? And if I do that, you can see that if I press enter, it already tells me like, oh, you need to do it, blah, blah, blah. So I can write the same command again, and I can use the help command to get a little bit of extra help, all right? So that is calling the process that is living on a different folder from the folder that I have all the files. The alternative would be to basically just take this folder, this one, and add it to your system path so that everything that lives here is available everywhere else to be executed from the command line. That process has pros and cons. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't wanna get into that right now, so I'm just going to be calling it remotely from here, okay? So what do we do then? So it's just very easy. The only thing that we need to do is we need to call yak. And then what we need to do is we need to use the build command. If we just do it as it is, then this will basically generate a command file. It will generate a file that is going to be called parametric camp, blah, 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 one, zero, zero, rhino seven and any, all right? And you can see that, and you can see that what that means is that 
Right now, it has picked up from the manifest file, it has picked up that the version of the plugin is 010. It has also picked up from the DLL that it will only be compatible with Rhino versions 7 and up because of the Rhino common dependency that it has. And it's also going to be targeting any file system. So it's going to be tar um, any environment or any platform. So it will run on Windows and it will run on Mac. Okay. So if you want to be more specific about what is going to be running on, you have, you can choose, for example, you can say, well, you, I want to build this, but I want to build this targeting a platform that is going to be Windows only. All right. So you can do that. And then you can see that the file will be the same, but the name will have the Windows uh, tag on it, you know, and now I have the any, and then I have the Windows one. So this is up to you. Um, depending on these names, the package manager will know if people can install this package in their system or not. So it's kind of important. And then you can see that the YAC file, what's interesting is that the YAC file has the extension YAC, but it's basically a zip file. You can open it uh, with any zip um, manager and it will have all these files that you can see in the, the plugin, the DLL, the text files and the samples. So it's a very straightforward thing, all right? So what you want to do is you want to basically build this YAC file with this, com this template for a name so that it's properly indexed in the package manager. Once we have that package, then the next thing is uploading that package to the package manager server in Rhino. The way we're going to do that is also using the JAC uh, command line tool. So I'm going, to, um, I'm going to clear the screen here. And if you look at the documentation, when you want to push a package to the server, the first thing that the documentation tells you you need to do is you need to authenticate yourself. So you cannot just anonymously push stuff to the server. You have to have a Rhino account so that this package is connected to your Rhino account. So the way to do that is by using the uh, the YAC uh, command line tool and with the login tag. So I'm going to say YAC login and you can see that I'm, my browser is opening and YAC would like to view blah blah blah. So you will get a prompt to just like put your email, your password. This is happening because I tried it before and I'm already logged in. So yes, I want to allow YAC to do this thing. So my authorization is complete. I'm good and I get a message here that my login is successful and that I have a token for my account. All right, so I'm logged in. So that's great. And then the next thing you want to do is you just want to push the file. So what does that look like? Just as easy as going for Jack again and then push and then the name of the file parametric cam 01 rhino 7 any dot yak. All right, a word of caution, this process pushing is undoable. You cannot undo it. You can also not delete a package from the package manager. You can only hide it. And even hiding it is not a straightforward process. And deleting is a process that actually requires you emailing someone from there. And also the name of your package will be blocked forever if you delete something. So just word of caution, whenever you push something to the server, just make very, very sure that everything is working and that you want that to stay there in the package manager for the rest of your life, basically, right? So I'm going to do it. So I'm going to just like push this, okay? And yes, it got pushed to any platform, to a Rhino 7, etc., etc. So let's see if it actually worked. So I'm going to go back to here and I this is the first time I published this one. So can I look for wait 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 can can i look for oh my god can i look for paramet parametric Woo! look at this parametric camp it's a test app for teaching my tutorials blah 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 and the code and the blah 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 so i can now install it and if i install it it gets downloaded i need to restart right now Okay, and then if I restart Rhino, then my, <clears throat> my package is going to be here. Okay, well, I actually have two because I was doing a development version. So 
So this is just uh, what am I, what am I going to do? So I want to load which one? I want to load. I don't know what I've done. <laughs> I've deleted something. <laughs> oh, sorry. I've deleted one of the two ones that I. But anyway, so you have it here now, and it's working, and it's part of. You can now share it with people, and if people open a file where your plugin is missing, they will get a prompt like the one I showed before to download and install it from the package manager, which is very nice. So as of February 2023, the recording of this video, I recommend that you go for the Jack uh, package manager as opposed to Food for Rhino, which I assume is probably going to at some point expire. Okay, beautiful. So that was it for this one. Uh, now we know how to publish packages to the server and how to download them automatically in the Rhino ecosystem. This works for Rhino scripts as well and for Rhino applications, not just for Grasshopper. So it's the same process. Okay. Beautiful. That was awesome. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope this was useful. If it was, maybe like the buttons, tell your friends, um, share us, share, share something that you've done with us on Discord, whatever you feel. Okay. Thank you very much and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.